हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द कलेक्शन मेथड्स दैट इज़ इन टेक्सोनॉमिक प्रोसीजर्स एंड आल्सो द कलेक्शन ऑफ इंसेक्ट्स बेसिकली एंड इट इंक्लूड्स वेरियस मेथड्स लाइक द यूज ऑफ बर्लीज फनल द यूज ऑफ एस्पिरेटर और द फ्लोटेशन मैथड सो नाउ टूडे वी विल बी गोइंग टू अगेन कंटिन्यू द सेम सीरीज ऑन द टेक्सोनॉमिक प्रोसीजर्स एंड नाउ the use of killing agents and the killing bottles in collection of insects so various kinds of killing agents are used but the best one are those which kill the insect immediately that is their reaction will be fast and the result will be fast we can say without affecting their color that is color is important in their identification or hardening them so the most commonly are used killing agent are cyanide and especially potassium cyanide some commonly used killing bottles are as follows so we can see them one by one so the first is cyanide bottle so it consists of a wide mouth bottle or a jar of a heavy duty glass with a fitted cork or a lead a layer of granulated potassium cyanide of about 10 mm thickness spread at the bottom of the bottle then the powdered dry plaster of paris is poured over it till it forms a layer of 1.5 to 2 cm thickness and then four or five drops of water are added to it later a thick paste of some more plaster of paris in the water is poured over the previous mixture till it forms a 10 mm thick layer so the uncorked bottle is kept open for 22 30 hours to allow enough time for the plaster of paris to dry a blotting paper is then spread over it absorbing the moisture given out by the cyanide and to avoid direct contact of the specimen with the killing agent so this is a diagram of cyanide bottle poison blotting paper is used for absorbing moisture plaster of paris that is wet and that is plaster of paris that is dry that is a layer is uh, we can say applied here and then kcn at the bottom of the uh, cyanide bottle now the only disadvantage with the cyanide is that it makes the insects hard and brittle besides affecting their colors that is it makes insects hard and brittle so that they are not much effective in their identification process so cyanide is deadly poisonous so the bottles must be labeled as poison and stored carefully that is they should be handled with care now the second killing agent is ethyl acetate killing bottle or the tube so ethyl acetate is also an effective killing agent for insects especially the beetles and the hymenopterans etc so uh, any glass bottle can be taken to make the ethyl acetate killing bottle uh, in figure v we can see that then cotton soaked in this killing agent is placed at the bottom which is then covered by a piece of a blotting paper for preventing the again direct contact of the specimen with the cotton so we can see that in case of killing agents there should not be a direct contact between the specimen and the killing agents so at the end of the each day the insects collected in the bottle are taken out and then preserved so other killing agents that are used for killing insects are tetrachloroethene that car carbon tetrachloride ether chloroform benzene ammonia and ethyl dichloride so this is uh, we can say a bottle that is used for killing agent ethyl acetate okay here the blotting paper is used and the paper cotton that is soaked in the ethyl acetate is used at the bottom so now although these are most safer to use and easy to handle than the cyanide that is the ethyl acetate they too require more precautions so the vapors of carbon tetrachloride is inhaled in excess if inhaled in excess can eventually damage the liver then benzene and ammonia may affect the color of the insects which is the basic feature for the identification so they will lead to that uh, as in case of cyanide it will lead to hardening etc so like cyanide carbon tetrachloride and the chloroform also make the specimen hard and brittle 
Ethyl chloride is good but it affects the color of the insect especially the orthopteras then the tetrachloroethane is a safest and the more efficient killing agent so tetrachloroethane is a safe one mm. then similar to cyanide bottle all such killing bottles should also be labeled at as a poison for taking precautions then the precautions of the collecting insect that is while collecting insects we should have to keep some points in the mind so that it will be beneficial for the collector itself so the insect should not be left for too long in the killing bottle that will lead to changing in the color or it will lead to direct contact between the poison agent okay uh, or the insect so they should be removed before they get dirty or damaged then they are uh, should also be no over there is no uh, no overcrowding of the specimen in the killing bottle they, that is we should not fill up to a uh, maximum carrying capacity of insects in that particular uh, bottle okay there should be much spacing between them so separate small killing bottles may be preferred for collecting the few specimen in each one of them okay that is we can collect one particular insect in a one particular bottle then if all kinds of insects like uh, tough and uh, fragile or large and uh, small are put in the same bottle it can be possible they damage each other so, so we should have also kept this point in mind by collect we can say during the collection of the insects then some grasshoppers and beetles excrete okay which ruin other specimens in the bottles then some scorpions flies emits a brown fluid which also ruin the other specimens and the bottle so it will be better to hold them for a minute till they emit a brown fluid before putting in the killing bottle so basically we have to wait for them for uh, we can say capturing them into the killing bottle then lepidopterans like butterflies and moths should never be mixed with other specimens the larvae of the insects can be best killed by immersing them in boiling water before they are placed in the liquid preservative to avoid their distortion so these are the various precautions we should keep them in consideration while collecting the insects now the collection methods of aquatic animals that is there are various ways to collect aquatic animals around the year these methods may be trawling or dredging for the key deep sea animals for this method elaborate and specifically designed equipments that is operated by a crew of sailors and scientists on an ocean going vessel uh, are used so trawling basically means a commercial fishing technique in which a net is dragged by a moving boat uh, then dredging as we have studied earlier an instrument that is used to collect the water species basically fishes then collection of the fresh water invertebrates so various uh, instruments are utilized here first is the use of dip net so uh, these are generally short handle net with medium mesh and are suitable for collecting insect larvae insects like pleo plecoptera whose habitat is the margins of the rivers lakes streams or the snow or the ice near the streams or the rivers then odonata nymphs are aquatic in nature then then ephemeraptera that is the immature stages they are also aquatic in nature so this net is basically used for capturing them crabs brittles can be easily collected by the finer mesh present in this dip net it is valuable and an expensive tool so this is a diagram that is handle with a fine mesh a particular diameter okay and a elastic at the end now the use of plankton net is also utilized so plankton net are used for collecting zooplanktons and phytoplanktons mainly attached behind a boat so a small glass or a plastic jar present at the base of the plankton net okay jar collect the insects such nets are expensive aquatic plants are the rich source of microorganisms so to collect these aquatic plants as well as these microorganisms small grappling hooks are used in these plankton nets so these hooks are attached to a rock and it kept into the pond so these are the grappling hook that is whenever we kept a particular phytoplankton then the microorganisms residing them will attach here 
then the collection of marine water invertebrates that is uh, for collecting the marine invertebrates there are several additional items which are needed first is a small hammer and a cutting tool that is they are very useful when collecting the barnacles okay certain polychaetes worms and the mollusk so in case of marine collecting some basic precautions should be needed that is such as always be aware of the tidal flux that is we should be uh, avoided avoid we should avoid the tides or we have to aware about the tidal conditions then in case of contractile animals some anesthesis are used before the collection of these animals because of their poisonous activity that they possess so this is the diagram of the plankton net that we have discussed earlier that is a glass vial or a plastic jar is attached at the bottom or the end of the plastic net plankton net then collection of benthic organisms that are present in sea basically benthic is a layer in uh, deep sea oceans okay so in the intertidal region only simple equipments are needed but for collecting in the deep water various types of dredges and grabs are used so a dredge consists essentially of a heavy rectangular or triangular iron frame to which is attached a bag like a fish net of cotton or the wire to retain the organism uh, the dredge is tracked on the bottom by means of a wire cable operated from a slowly moving ship so the basically dredge is utilized for this purpose so this is the diagram representing the various uh, instruments that are used this is the dredge method then beam trawl is used and other trolls are also used in the case of benthic organisms so yeah this is all about the collection methods of various organisms okay and the precautions related to their uh, capturing or the collection so hope you will like my video and if you like my video please do like share and subscribe to my channel in the next video we will be going to discuss about the various preservation methods of the organism so stay tuned for next video